So first, I'd like to welcome everyone. I, uh, I know that this is a busy time of the year, the start of school, many crowded fall calendars. So my commitment to you today is that this announcement is going to be bigger than iPhone 7 and more, <laughs> and more important than pumpkin spice lattes. So good afternoon and welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. And welcome to the release of Metro Connects. We're eager to share the details of this final version of our long range plan that so many of you helped create. So let me start by thanking everyone, the community members, city leaders and their staff from throughout many organizations and jurisdictions who contributed countless hours of efforts to help shape this plan. I probably will miss somebody when I want to make sure that I try to acknowledge as many of our elected officials in the room as possible. So we have Mayor Bacchus from Auburn. Thank you for being here. We have King County Council Chair Joe McDermott, Council Member Balducci, Mayor Butler from Issaquah, Mayor Bassett from Mercer Island, Mayor Larson from Snoqualmie, uh, Mayor Baker from Kenmore, uh, Councilmember Ramos from Issaquah, Councilmember Huckabee from Sammamish, uh, Councilmember Wright from Lake Forest Park, and I think I got everybody. I hope I did. Anybody else? So thank you all for being here, and also we have Sound Transit Chief Executive Peter Rogoff. Peter, welcome and thank you. And finally, of course, we're also joined today by King County Executive Dow Constantine. I will introduce him in just a moment, and he will share specific actions he will take in the upcoming two-year budget that charts Metro's course into the future. My name is Rob Gannon, and I have the good fortune to serve as the interim general manager of King County Metro. And I must confess, if I may, to a certain degree of liberation, it seems that today all leaders, especially early in their tenure, are called to establish and express a compelling vision for their organization. I am fortunate in that this document, Metro Connects, does just that for me. And what it does is free me to focus on successful implementation of all that goes into this plan. And I think we can all acknowledge that that is so very important, especially at these early stages. A good start does not guarantee success in the end, but it certainly helps. And that's what we at Metro Transit will be focusing on in the coming months and years, a very good start. I'm also so proud of the work that has been accomplished to establish this vision for transit service, because more than anything, Metro Connects starts as a partnership. You, all of you, and our greater community helped shape this document. So I want to call out our community advisory group, 25 people who dug in, who all have impressive backgrounds and experience, and also diverse perspectives on what transportation in our communities across the county must mean. I also want to thank our technical advisory committee, the staff from 39 cities and our transportation partners. These are the big thinkers and the detail people that help big ideas come to life. And importantly, we were also helped by more than 1,500 people who attended 17 community forums across King County and nearly 10,000 people responded to our surveys. This collectively is our work. And I'd like you all to know that one of my goals is always to demonstrate that Metro Transit can be the best partner in the room, always finding ways to better serve our customers. So in brief, what will this plan do? It will give us all the freedom to move quickly, safely, and comfortably using a world-class integrated transit system so that people can achieve their goals no matter where they live in King County. This plan will also help us reduce pollution and move people better in the face of what we all know to be congestion. And in the end, those things will support a thriving economy. And in broad strokes, it lays out three key efforts. 
first, we will enhance Metro's service network, providing services that are tailored to meet the needs of diverse communities throughout King County. Second, it identifies all of the necessary capital investments we need to make our transit system work better than it does today. And third, it establishes the teamwork that is so necessary with our cities and jurisdictions to accomplish this plan because we all know that transit is an integral component to helping cities achieve their growth plans. So now let me turn things over to King County Executive Dow Constantine. He will share the first steps needed so we can begin as a region to accomplish this vision of more service, more choices, and one easy to use system. And in turn, that will allow Metro to move more riders quickly, safely, and comfortably. So I'd like to thank the executive for his leadership on both Metro Connects and the integrated approach to providing transit service in our region and the vision he has to strengthen our service for our customers. Please welcome King County Executive Dow Constantine. Thank you. thank you, Rob. And thanks to all of you for being here today. I particularly want to thank all the members of the committees for helping us shape our transit long range plan and for joining us here today for its launch. Uh, Rob just spelled out a, a, a compelling vision for regional mobility. Uh, it's what I asked Metro to do a few years ago. Some of you may not know I have a planning background. Uh, yeah, I studied planning in college as a way to get some daily relief from law school. And, uh, and it's come in very handy in my job. So one of the first things I asked when I became executive, I asked of Metro, what are we going to do? What do you plan to do to accommodate one million people and nearly as many new jobs over the course of the next 25 or 30 years? Well, I am pleased that uh, the question has been answered with Metro Connects. We are answering that question by sending the council this thoughtful plan that was developed in partnership with those in this room and many others. It calls for increasing the number of buses on the street by 30%, increasing bus service by 70%, doubling ridership, and investing in the systems and in our workforce needed to accomplish that vision. Our regional economy is strong. I don't have to tell anybody here that. You can see it around you every day. This region has the means to be able to provide the kind of mobility people want and need. And right now, we have the funds to improve service and begin making the investments in the long-range vision of Metro Connects. Our regional economy is one factor, but it's also the hard work of our employees at Metro who have found better ways, more efficient ways to deliver service day in and day out. And I want to make sure that we constantly acknowledge their role in continuously improving our operations. Here's the thing about this economy and this investment. Just putting more buses on the streets, that by itself is not going to get the job done. It is going to take a thorough major shift in our approach. So think about this. The last major infrastructure investments for our bus system took place in maybe the early 1990s, a, de a couple decades or more ago. Uh, that's when we built the downtown bus tunnel, when we opened the bus base near Shoreline. And then ever since, we've been struggling to expand incrementally to meet this overwhelming continuous increase in demand. We invested in things like rapid ride, but then again during the recession, we had to contract some and fight tooth and nail to keep service on the street and in doing so, really exclude a lot of other critical investments. Now Metro is in a position to aggressively expand transit to meet the ever-growing demand for service. First though, we have to have the people. We have to have the people to drive the buses. We have to have the people to manage the new service. 
And we have to have the new buses to drive and the bases where those buses can be housed and maintained. King County is a big, big operation, but at its core is transit. At its core is moving people throughout this county of 2.1 million people. The biennial operating budget for Metro Transit is $1.6 billion. And we will invest $1.8 billion in our six-year capital program. Today, I want to call attention to three major initiatives to add service in a way that is balanced. So this is when I get to step from the world of the planners, who rarely get to participate in actually making their plans come to life, into the role of the county executive, who's lucky enough to be able to do that. One, I'm including $30 million to add 300,000 hours of new annual service in the next biennium to reduce crowding, to increase reliability, and to help meet target service levels on key corridors. By following Metro's existing service guidelines, we're going to add service to 27 overcrowded routes. We'll improve reliability on 60 routes across the county. And we'll be making investments to help bring 18 routes closer to their target service levels. And as we make these changes, our service guidelines that we have created over the course of the last several years ensure that the investments are going to be made in a thoughtful, rational, policy-driven way. They are going to be made, for example, in routes serving low-income and minority communities that may rely most on transit. I'm also directing $11 million over the course of the next two years for a more visible security presence on our transit system, adding Metro Transit police deputies and other resources, and getting cameras into 100% of our coaches by the end of 2018. Second, my budget invests money in systems and infrastructure that support the 25-year plan. Metro now has seven bus bases that are stretched absolutely to capacity. If we're going to expand service, we have to make room for those buses. We have to build an eighth bus base, and that is what we are going to do, most likely somewhere in South King County. We will invest $215 million over the next six years to add base capacity for buses. Metro is already struggling to hire and train enough operators to drive its existing schedule, and in the face of a competitive job market, that gets tougher every day. We have a growing number of retirements as well. Folks have been with us a long time. And there's movement within the workforce. The organization must not only hire operators, but also trainers and supervisors, maintenance crew, and other management and support staff. All of that is needed to make service work, to ensure the greatest possible level of safety and efficiency in our transit system. Third, my budget proposal also includes a 10-year capital investment plan that will put Metro in a position to begin to implement the vision of Metro Connects and build a transit system that truly meets the needs of our growing community. So as we sat down to draft Metro's budget, we could have thrown all of our dollars into putting service on the streets right now, including the one-time dollars that we're getting from sales tax from this construction boom you're seeing all around us. A big part of the bump in sales tax in these few years is from all of these cranes you see in Seattle and Bellevue and all around King County. But supporting the expansion of service requires planning. It requires mobilization, acquisition, and construction that is not readily visible to the public the way that a bus is. But look at what Amazon did during the dot-com recession. Rather than focusing on short-term profits, Amazon opted for the long game, the long-term approach which strengthened the company to endure the subsequent Great Recession. 
They devoted time and money to expanding their back-end programming on big data servers, build up their web interface and customer services, and to developing a vast distribution infrastructure to speed delivery to customers. The short-term profits weren't there, and I have no doubt that a lot of investors grumbled about that at the time. But Amazon emerged from that recession as the highest performing online sales platform anywhere, not to mention a major consumer of transit in our county. I envision Metro building the transit equivalent, a system that by 2040 doubles transit ridership in King County to more than one million boardings a day, brings frequent service to within a half mile of 73% of the people of King County. Can you imagine nearly three quarters of us being able to easily walk to the nearest bus and get wherever we need to go in this county. And a system that offers better access to opportunity for everyone. Our workers, the people of King County, our small business owners, everyone who depends on us creating mobility for a region that is growing and shows no sign of stopping. That's my vision for Metro. And with my biennial budget, we will take important steps to make that happen. Now, everything we have achieved over the last six and a half years since I became executive has been done in partnership. And we have a lot of great partners here today, many of whom have been named, many of whom have not. I want to introduce one very important partner right now. She has been a critical voice in the region's transportation planning. She truly understands how transportation systems impact our quality of life. And she is helping lead us forward on a comprehensive transit solution for South King County, including commuter rail and bus service and cooperation between the county and cities and tribes. She is one of the visionaries who is going to help shape the next generation of transit service in this region. Please welcome Auburn Mayor Nancy Backus. Thank you and good afternoon. It's often difficult to follow a dynamic visionary leader such as Executive Constantine, but today I'm honored to do so because as he mentioned, transit is so important to our region. It's become more and more important to the success of our local economies and addressing the growth. In Auburn, we value the flexibility and obvious connectivity to our region that transit provides. And I am pleased that Sound Cities Association and many of our individual cities have been engaged with Metro in developing this transit vision. This plan that charts a course for how Metro Transit Service will evolve around the region. And importantly, it links transit service with jurisdictional growth plans and continues the service guidelines task force direction of balancing social equity, geographic value, and productivity. This facilitates better planning between cities and metro and will help us work together to ensure alignment of capital and operational investments to support the growth in the transit service we so desperately need for our communities. I really appreciate the level of outreach and coordination that went into this plan, from the hands-on workshops that moved routes around, to working across city and county boundaries to identify actions that are needed to augment and support transit service to the SCA and individual council briefings Metro staff conducted to ensure broad input was gathered. I know that for Sound Cities Association, we're looking forward to seeing just how this plan is implemented over time. And we know that it's not just a partnership with public agencies, but a lot of work has been done with different organizations around the region, including colleges, businesses, employers, and advocacy organizations. And to further share that information with you, I'd like to introduce Chris Eau Claire from King County Metro.
Thank you, Mayor Abacus. Um, once again, I'm Chris Eau Claire from King County Metro. I'm the manager of strategy and performance. And I've had the pleasure of leading a really dynamic team at King County Metro. But before we dive into that, I want to take a second and um, welcome a few other leaders up to the stage. First, I'd like to bring up Council Chair and fellow Sea line rider with me, um, Council Chair Joe McDermott. Thank you, Chris. I was prepared to remind everybody you'd left that part out, so I'm glad you didn't. In our rapidly changing and growing region, um, a vision for a world-class transit system that gives more frequent, reliable, and fast service all day, every day, no matter where you want to go in King County, is more important than ever. I'm very proud of the work that has gone into this 25-year plan. King County underwent an extensive outreach effort that shaped and strengthened the plan. I want to thank all of the residents, riders, cities, stakeholders, and other transit agencies that worked so hard on putting together um, King County Con um, Connects. Your efforts are much appreciated, and this plan would not be the same, and not be as valuable as it is, without your input. It is a it is fully integrated with sound transit to provide coordinated and efficiency in our overall transit network system. The opening, I hope you didn't miss the fact that last March, sound transit opened stations on Capitol Hill and Husky Stadium. And in fa fact, if you missed it last March, you truly didn't miss it if you followed the executive on social media last weekend as he took light rail to Husky Stadium in his annual pilgrimage. <laughs> but the opening of those two stations um, and the restructure of bus systems connecting neighborhoods to high capacity transit gave us an example of how we are creating interconnected transportation systems that give people more choices about how to move around efficiently throughout the region. We have so many more opportunities to do this in our region and this plan brings them to um, the forefront in our planning, our coordination and all of our um, mindfulness. We are also learning how to provide service in unique areas of our county, out in the Snoqualmie Valley or, in, or on Vashon Island, isolated smaller areas where high capacity transit isn't the way we're going to move people around. This plan expands our alternative so service programs, which allows innovation and new programs to meet these unique needs. King County will provide efficient and user-friendly service in these less populated areas of our county as well. And I'm ready to get to work on implementing this plan, both funding and implementing, working with my council um, colleagues. Look forward to delivering that work with um, the, the King County Council to deliver better transit integration for our entire region. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember McDermott. And now I have the pleasure to introduce um, Councilmember Claudia Balducci. I've had the pleasure of getting to know her as she is the chair of the Regional Transit Committee. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, one of the reasons that I'm excited about this plan is the same reason that I got involved almost, oh, 15 years ago now advocating for better transit, and it's just because there is so much demand. Uh, today, we are seeing record ridership on our sound transit light rail system. We are seeing record ridership on our metro bus system. We have always, by the way, been the van pool capital of the world. Uh, we have more riders, not just per capita, but more riders than anywhere else. Distant second is Los Angeles. And all I hear as an elected official with all that is, I need more service. The buses are standing room only in the mornings and the afternoons. When I, when I commute here from my district in the east side, it is absolutely crush loads on our buses because so many people want to ride the system to get around. And that's today. That's before we have a million more people living here within the next 25 years or so. So Metro Connects is a really important and vital next step in setting the vision for how we are going to serve all of that demand that we have today that's unmet and the demand that we have coming in the future. Uh, with the build out of our light rail system and with Metro Connects, as you heard, almost 75% of the people in King County will have easy access to frequent service. And frequent service means no schedules, not a lot of need to plan in advance. You just leave your house and you can easily get on a, a bus or a train that is coming very soon 
uh, without having to do a lot to, to get ready for it. It makes it easier for people to use transit as a way of getting around all the time to all the places they need to go. Um, this is what people have been asking for in my district. This is what people have been asking for throughout King County. And I am absolutely delighted at the Regional Transit Committee to be working with my colleagues from the cities to have our final you know, say and edits uh, to get it to be exactly what it needs to be. And then we can adopt it at the council and get to implementing as, uh, as my colleague Joe McDermott said. Thank you very much. Thank you, council member. And then um, it is also important for us to introduce um, one of our trusted advocates, um, Shafali Ranganathan, and all the work that she's done as the executive director as Transportation Choices Coalition. They will be essential as we need their help in implementing this vision. Thank you, Chris. Um, I am so pleased to be here today to mark the launch of uh, Metro Connects. Transportation Choices, along with bicycle, pedestrian, and social justice organizations, worked uh, long and hard with Metro to, to help develop this plan. Uh, as a transit rider who is a Metro bus rider, for nearly 10 years that I've lived here, I can tell you transit gets me where I need to go on time to work to, to get my kid to school. And I am so excited to see the development of this plan in the future for Metro, in the, for the region. This plan is extensive and it's ambitious, and it is the first step to creating a frequent and reliable transit network for King County. We know that trans transportation agencies are working together to coordinate and collaborate to create an integrated network. I can testify with the, that. I work with all of you all the time. Uh, and coordinating these plans will make sure that the county is truly connected with real transportation choices. Uh, like many of you, uh, we rolled our sleeves up to make sure that this plan represents the needs of the county to make sure that people who are transit dependent can get to work and to opportunities all around the county. And also to make sure that this represents not just the system for today, but the system that our growing region needs. Uh, more importantly, we look forward to working with you, Chris, and others to make this plan a reality. And uh, I'm going to hand it back over to Chris to talk more about the plan. Thanks so much, Shafali. And now I'd like to welcome two Metro staff members to come up. Um, we've talked a lot about the vision, but it's time to say a special thanks to two groups, our Community Advisory Group and our Technical Advisory Committee. So Tristan Cook and Stephen Hunt, could you come on up? Good afternoon, my name is Stephen Hunt and I've been the project manager for the long range plan and so I may be the happiest person to be in this room. <laughs> but I'll tell you why, I've got two reasons why. That's not because the project's done. Um, the first is I love this slideshow which goes through all these different pictures of the different places that we've been and all the people that we've talked through. And even though it's on loop, which sometimes is how the project felt, um, <laughs> It represents an enormous amount of work in places that we've been and, and the people that we've talked to. Um, and then secondly, the thing that I'm most proud of in being here today is seeing, having the chance to see you all again, uh, all the members of the, particularly the technical advisory committee members, those members from the staff from the city that we've worked with to really hammer out this vision. And so I'm just here to say thank you so much and I want all of the TAC members to raise your hand so everybody can see who you are. and say that we look forward to continuing that relationship over the next many years to, to realize this plan. And so as you leave today, we have a certificate for all of the TAC members. Please pick one up as a token of our appreciation for all the work that you put into it. So thank you very much. We were also fortunate to have an engaged group of community members who served on the community advisory group. Members live in communities throughout King County and brought many diverse perspectives that represented those of the people Metro serves every day. We received invaluable input from this group. They helped shape both the plan as well as our outreach process. We really appreciate uh, the time and the effort that these individuals dedicated to this plan and we'd like to recognize them now. Uh, if the community advisory group members in the room could raise their hand, we'd like to give you a round of applause.
and we also have a certificate for you as well, and there are water bottles as well for, for you guys, so thank you. Thanks so much. I'll be pretty quick in wrapping this up. There's still one more group that we haven't recognized, and it really is um, the Metro team. Um, we are so fortunate to have skilled, engaged employees that believe in public transportation. And I want to say Rob Gannon, our leader as the general manager, but Harold Taniguchi, who's our director um, of transportation, and Victor Obeso, who's our deputy director. Leadership has been critical in this, um, so thank you. And thank you to all the staff members and consultants and everyone that participated in this. This was critical. All your participation was important. Second, we're not done. We just have a vision. We need to work together. As Stephen and Tristan said, we will continue to engage our community advisory group and our technical advisory committee as we move forward with the implementation plan. But all of you will need to be involved. The executive has just announced a budget that will require a lot of work internally to build the capacity that we need in order to deliver those hours, hundreds of thousands of hours of service. But we will not do it effectively without partnerships. Those partnerships need to grow throughout the county, not just with the public sector, but with the private sectors and other key stakeholders. So please stay involved with Metro. And finally, um, I just want to say thank you. Thank you to everyone. Please enjoy a slice of cake. Enjoy um, a sandwich. And stick around. We have staff that are present at the boards if you want to hear more about our plan. Thank you so much to everyone today. <laughs>